this room in 100 AD, and they are of the Pharisee party. So when you get the condemnation of Pharisees in the New Testament, you're really aiming it at the rabbinical uh, group of people. But that's not always how it's being used in the New Testament, Pharisee. And I'll, when we come to it, I'll show you that it actually often means something Paul says. Pharisees enter the early church and want to inflict circumcision on you. He says that in uh, uh, Acts 15. And so Acts is using Pharisee to some extent as the party of the circumcised. So often Pharisee means people within the church who have a more pro-law orientation. And I'll pick that up when we get into the passages in the New Testament that that relates to. In any event, um, so things get pretty dark. We don't know much. When does Alexander the Great come? That's an easy date. 333 to this area. He comes earlier than that in other areas, but 333 is when he gets into this uh, Palestine area. And, and then when does he die? 323. So there's a 10 year period that he's in control, but he's mostly off in India someplace, and then his empire is divided up into four parts, as we discussed a little bit. Um, but the main two parts <coughs> are the Syrians over here. These are now Greek Syrians called the Seleucids. And the Egyptians over here, and these are now Greek Egyptians called the Ptolemies, the last representative of whom is Cleopatra. Okay? So that's our situation there. But we get a situation, and then we have this freedom throw that we discussed, led by the Maccabees in the 170s or so. Uh, for a while, the Ptolemies prior to that are, are fairly, uh, fairly um, uh, tolerant. And they have control up to about the 200s, but at some point the Seleucids take control of the area and they're much more intolerant. And they want to change Jewish practices, introduce Hellenistic practices and so on. And that triggers, according to the Maccabee books and Josephus and the other ones who write about this, the uprising against the Seleucids in the uh, 160s period, 70s, 60s period, B.C., which the Jews celebrate in their supposed Hanukkah festivals to this day. It's really a national liberation uh, festival and so on. And we get the Maccabean kingship then, which is the first independent kingship that we have here. Oh, let's say from about 170, to I think you would say, um, well, certainly to 63 BC. Now this is we're getting into the real background to Jesus here. We, a lot of people don't know, you have an independent Jewish state, totally independent Jewish state, very law-oriented, very zealot if you want to call it that. The Maccabee books have the father of the Maccabean family, someone called Mattathias. All the, by the way, uh, names in the New Testament apostle type people, a lot of them are Maccabean names. Matthew is a Maccabean name. Simon. He's one of Mattathias' sons. John. He's another of Mattathias' sons. Jude, Judas. Judas Maccabee, he's the principal one of Mattathias' sons. All these names are prominent among the New Testament uh, leadership around Jesus. Um, so really, um, you're showing a lot of Maccabean, um, I wouldn't say influence necessarily as so much as respect for the Maccabeans. You don't name your kid something if you don't respect the person you're naming them after. For instance, back in the 40s, 50s, 60s, in this country there used to be a lot of uh, Afro-Americans who were called Roosevelt or Wilson as a first name. Uh, they used the name of presidents very often. Now they use a Muslim or created names a lot, but in those days they used a lot of presidents' names. So for instance, one of those famous football players, his name was Roosevelt Greer, and people like that. So 
you don't call a person Roosevelt unless you respected Roosevelt. <laughs> you know? The same as Woodrow Wilson. You don't call a person Wilson unless you respected Woodrow Wilson. Or Lincoln, that's the first name I'm talking about. You know, you don't, uh, my uncle, for instance, changed his middle name to Lincoln. His, his name actually was uh, Levi. Well, that's what the Hebrew would have been. It's a German variation of Lowy. He changed it to Lincoln. Why would he change it? Well, he loved Lincoln. That's why he changed it to Lincoln. So you don't call yourself Simon or Matthew or something like that if you don't like the Maccabean. Does that make someone? Okay. And then in addition, even the name of um, Jesus' mother, Mary, is one of the most beloved Maccabean princesses. Josephus calls her Mariam. That's the Latin, but it's really Mary. And it comes from the original Hebrew, Miri. Moses' sister in the Old Testament. But as it comes down in the spirit, it becomes Mariam, Mary. And really funny, in Arabic, it's Maryam. And that's why in the Quran, if you know your Quran, Moses' sister that the Koran calls Maryam is mistaken for Jesus' mother, Mary. Well, you know, it's a, it's a clear, uh, uh, it's, it's, a, it's an understandable error of someone who's working in an oral tradition who doesn't have the written documents in front of him. Oh, this is not coming from an angel, by the way. This is an angel that make mistakes of this kind. I don't think, I hope not. I hope the angel got it all straight up there. But uh, no, don't go and argue with this with Muslims to get your head chopped off. <laughs> this is what the Pope is finding today. You know, uh, uh, you cannot question official doctrines in in areas of the world where you don't have separation of church and state. You couldn't question it in the West either. You'd get burned at the stake back in the old days, wouldn't you? So it's, a, it's only something recently that we. You know, stop burning people at the stake since about 1500 or so. We were burning people up until around 1600. You know, uh, so, you know, you guys have only recently been freed in terms of uh, being able to express yourself. Because you said the wrong thing back in those days. I mean, Galileo was lucky. They would have burned him if they could have. They, they burned Giordano Bruno, I think. But, uh, you know, they just put him under house arrest. They just figured it was too much of a, too much of a big thing to burn him up. But uh, poor Joan of Arc even got burned. And, uh, you know, she was supposed to be one 